Good morning, or maybe it's good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, but whatever time of day it is, I want to welcome you and I want to congratulate you. And I just want to tell you that I'm really proud of you for taking this step for yourself. Um, because investing in ourselves is so, uh, it is so powerful. It has such a powerful um, ripple of impact in our lives. And so I wanted to get on here and the first thing I wanted to tell you was congratulations. And you're taking some really big steps for yourself by doing something like this. I realize that this is an investment for you. And um, I know you're gonna get a lot out of this that's gonna help you to move forward in your life in so many great ways. So I'm super, super happy that you're here. And thank you for allowing me to be your guide through this part of your wellness journey. Um, I want to start today, right off the bat, first, first week, first module, um, talking about our self-worth. And that links right into what I was just talking about, about you taking the leap to register in this program. In order to make an investment like that in yourself, you have to believe that you are worth it, right? not believing that I was worth it, worth my time, worth my investment, worth my love, nurturing for myself, um, all these things have held me back from many opportunities in my life. Um, and not just opportunities like for work or, you know, uh, sort of like that sort of business opportunity standpoint we think about, but opportunities just to grow into myself. And so I want you to know that whether you realize it or not, you have sent out a powerful message to the universe by jumping into this program. You are saying, I am worth it. I'm worth the time that I spend on myself. I am worth investing in myself. Um, I'm worth caring for. I'm worth, I'm worth it. You are so much more than enough. You have everything you need. You are worthy of it all. Okay. So that's something that I bring up at the beginning of this because I almost guarantee you it's going to come up again as we navigate through looking at different parts of our lives. A lot of us have stuff going on with how we value ourselves. This has been a thing for me too in my life. I think of, you know, the things that I would say when there was something that I wanted to do. Like I love learning. I love learning about stuff and I love taking courses and workshops. And if I could be a student forever at university, I would. Like I love that environment. Um, but I think back and there's so many times in my life when I've seen like a workshop, like, oh, I'd really like to do that. And then there's a dollar value assigned to it. And I'd be like, oh, you know what? No, we, there's bills we have to pay. We need to get the car fixed. Uh, the kids need some new gear. You know, there was always something. And I always would put those other things ahead of myself, even when I felt that it was something that would really benefit me. And in that way, I was operating from a place of lack and from a place of devaluing myself. I wasn't worth, you know, wasn't that important for me to do it. There were other things that were a higher priority than myself. Can I think about that for a second? You're placing other things, other people above yourself, yourself. Okay, and for some of us to wrap our heads around that, that might bring up some, uh, some resistance there as I say that. The thought of putting yourself as the most important person in your life. For those of us who are moms, there might be some like, whoa, like, no, my kids are the most important person. My spouse, my partner, my family. Think about what would happen if you put yourself at the top of that, what that would do to you, how that would change your life, and what that then allows you to do for all of those other people who are so close to your heart. Okay. When we 
truly value ourselves and we commit to giving ourselves what we need, our ability to give those around us from our fullest heart is amplified in so many ways. And so I, yeah, I want you to notice if you have some resistance around this idea of you being number one in your world and think about how that would, how it would change your interactions with the people around you. If your, if your health was in the best possible condition, if your energy was high all the time, if you were so happy, if you had so much joy in your heart, how would that impact the people around you? Okay, so I want you to think about that. That's something that I've had to, had to work at. You know, there were always things that were more important. Um, and a couple months ago, I encountered a woman that I decided that I really wanted to work with. I had a chance to talk to her a couple times and kind of get a sense for how she, how she operated and what her message was. And I just, in my heart, I was like, I need to learn from this person. They're going to enrich my life. <laughs> um, the cost for her program was considerably more than I had ever paid for another program. Um, and I initially, when she told me the cost, the first thought that went into my head was, well, I can't do it. I can't. So I started doing a bit of digging around all of the, the value, right? What if I prioritized myself in this capacity and how would that allow me to help and serve everyone around me? Um, I went to my husband with this and he actually had a course on that had been sitting on the back burner for him for a long time and he hadn't done it either because of bills, family, debt, all the things, right? And from me, because I was definitely thinking about those things, right? Thinking, oh, you know, maybe, maybe we shouldn't do it right now because we don't have enough. So for me to go to him and say, I have this program that I want to do and it costs this much. And I had some guilt around that that I had to work through, but he was amazing and supported me. And I said, you know, I think we both need to do these courses for ourselves. And we both have jumped in and it has been amazing. Okay. Um, the other crazy thing was that like, we didn't really know how that was going to work. And I tell you this because I know people that are in this program will have stretched themselves to make it happen. And I want you to know that I did the same thing. I had enough to pay for part of the program up front. I selected a payment plan and I didn't know how I was going to pay for those other payments. So I, I understand that icky feeling of like, oh, I really want to do this, but I don't know how it's going to work. Okay. Um, when you move from a place of valuing yourself, of prioritizing yourself, you open up space for a, a lot more to come into your life. And that includes financial abundance. And we're going to talk more about abundance also throughout the course of this, but you, you open the door, right? You're opening to allow things into your life by taking this leap, this step for yourself. And so I want you to know that if you need to chat about the, um, the investment, right? And how, how that works and the mindset that you can have around that, I want you to know that you can message me anytime because I've been through that on my own. The outcome, we figured it out. Um, the impact that the course had on me allowed for other things to come into our life and it wasn't an issue. Uh, I trusted that it would be okay, right? So there's, there's all this. Um, we are going to talk also a lot about energy. Okay, so I mentioned, I mentioned abundance. I mentioned you opening a door right? As you start to understand that you, you're worth it, right? You are worthy of all of this, okay? I want you to think about what comes to mind when you hear the word abundance. And for most of us, it's the thing in life that we want, maybe that we don't have. So for me, when I thought about abundance, I thought about money. I wanted more financial freedom. I wanted more financial security. Abundance came in the form of money. 
But I want you to know that it's, it's not limited in that capacity. When we talk about abundance, we talk about it's everything. It might be money. It might be a job. It's relationships. It's love. It's, it's all the same. So when you step into this place of value of elevating your level of energy and your vibration to say, yes, I'm worth it. And we start to change the way we think about ourselves. We elevate our level of energy. And as we do that, we connect with the energy of things in this world that are vibrating at a little bit higher. And that's where some of these abundant things are that we want. We are never going to bring these abundant things into our life when we're sitting down here in negative thoughts, negative self-talk, uh, very closed, right? These things don't resonate on the same frequency, so they can't come in. But when you start to elevate, right? I'm worth it. I'm enough. I love that about myself, right? When you start to bring that level up, now we can connect. And so we start to see these things start flowing into our life, okay? When you think about money or any other form of abundance, for that matter, I want you to think of it like electricity. When you turn off the light switch, it's not like the electricity just disappears, right? It's still there. It's just that the circuit is broken, so the energy, the electricity doesn't flow. This is just like the abundance in your life that you're looking for, okay? Perhaps right now your circuit has been closed for a while. You haven't been allowing those things into your life without even knowing it. By stepping into this course, you have, you have closed the circuit. You have allowed this energy to flow. Okay, and you're going to start to see more and more things come into your life, more abundance in whatever way that you choose to see it. It's all the same. Okay. This whole worthiness piece, again, plays a big piece, a big, um, a big role in that. And that lives, you know, down in our subconscious and it comes from things we heard when we were a kid. It comes from trauma. It comes from um genetics okay they pop up from experiences so it's going to be there it's good these thoughts are going to come up for you and i want you to just start to be curious and notice them and when something comes up and you're like oh or, yeah i'm not really being that nice to myself right now or i'm not really treating myself like i'm worthy um remind yourself that you love yourself i love you like look in the mirror i love you so powerful okay so remember also if you like the electricity analogy you have turned on the switch good things are going to happen in your life you though have to keep the switch open right you have to keep the switch on i guess that means the circuit's actually closed for the electricity to flow but we have to keep working at making sure that we keep that circuit flowing okay I also want to talk briefly about our stories about ourselves and we're going to actually dive into a little bit of homework on this this week in your first week. Okay. Um, so I'll explain the homework. You'll actually get the assignment in, uh, in a second video, but I want to just tell you a little bit about what this works, how this works. So, um, I'm going to start by sharing a little bit about my experience with this. Uh, when I was 21, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and I was really, really sick. I had to live in the hospital for a month. Um, I remember being in the hospital during that first flare. I'd lost about 40 pounds um, and I was in pain all the time. So I was on all kinds of crazy pain meds. Um, and I was so weak that I couldn't even take a shower by myself at 21. And I remember my mom having to come and help me take a shower and standing there just like naked and weak and crying in the shower and just being like, what the fuck? Like, how am I supposed to live the rest of my life like this? Right? How all of my dreams were just kind of flashing away before my eyes. Could I ever be a mom? Was I going to be able to work? I wanted to be a teacher. Was I going to be able to maintain a career? How was I going to get out of the hospital? Like just, it was a, it was a pretty rough spot. Um, 
what I will say is that, and I won't go into all the details, I'm sure over the course of this, I will be sharing a lot of this with you in our individual chats too. And, um, but I was very, very lucky to be guided in whatever way you want to say, but um, to a natural healthcare and natural healthcare alternatives. And uh, that happened pretty early in my journey and that has immensely shaped my life. Um, it saved me then and it has taken me on an amazing journey. Um, so maybe what I noticed is, and maybe you've had this experience, is when I was suddenly diagnosed, or I use the word label, I don't really like that word, but when, when suddenly ulcerative colitis was a thing that I had, it was amazing at how many other people started popping up out of the woodwork. My mom's friend's daughter had it and my cousin had it and so and so that I went to school had it. And there were just all these people that were, it's like, it was a good feeling for a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not the only one, right? Like there's people that I can talk to. Um, I was bombarded by all kinds of support and messaging messages and things like that. Um, so I met lots of people that had this particular disease. Uh, and as I was connecting with these different people, one thing that I realized was that when they spoke about their experience or about their life, it was as if they were in fact the disease or the illness. They, they were the, that illness was them. They were it and it was their story. And it, it had infiltrated their life in such a way um, and not just shaped who they were, because that's inevitable when you, those, I mean, that's our life, right? Things shape us. But it was like, it had become the, their entire essence. Their illness became their story. It was their life. And I remember thinking that that seemed foreign to me, that I didn't necessarily feel that way. Yes, I had this disease, but it was not me. Okay. And you'll notice, like, I talk a lot about my experience through those years of being so sick and learning and times of health and times of illness. And I, that was 10, 11 years of my life. I mean, I'm going to talk about it. And, but I never felt that I fully identified with my illness. It was as though I knew I was sick, but it, the sickness was not me. And I couldn't have explained it then, but I know on some deeper level that I was so much more, and I understood that I was so much more than what presented in the flesh and in my illness. Okay, me, the real me, like my soul, could never be defined by ulcerative colitis. Okay, so sickness was never who I felt that I was, even though I had this disease. Um, and... I fully understood that the only way for me to be cured of this disease was to have surgery. Um, so I knew that, but I just also knew that there was a part of me that this illness couldn't touch. And that's how I tried to live. So my illness story is, it feels like a story. Like it happened to me but it never defined me and it never took over my existence. And I am still learning about how that, how that is, why that is. I've actually been doing a lot of digging into that, kind of going back through some of the traumatic things that happened in my illness and how I have this perspective. I think I'll be learning about that for the rest of my life. But I want you to think about where you're at. And if you're here partly because you have some kind of an ailment or an illness or something that has challenged you in your life, I want you to think about how you allow that to define you. Does it define you? Right? Do you become it? Do you feel that you become it? Yeah. Or do you know that you are so much more than that? Because let me tell you, from my heart to your heart, you could never be encompassed by or defined or limited to the, uh, a label or a disease or a condition, even when you feel like it's taking over your life. 
it could never define you. You're so much more than that. Okay, what you believe about yourself, what you believe defines you, has an impact on how you present in your health, in your vitality, in the joy in your life, in your work, in your relationships. Okay, and so what we're going to dive into a little bit this week is looking a little bit at your story. Okay, and how you tell your story, how you feel about your story. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to get into the actual activity in a separate video so that you can, um, you don't have to listen to this whole piece to just get to the activity. Um, but I will tell you that it will involve a little bit of sitting in silence. It will involve some breathing. If you want to call that meditation, you can. If you want to call that a mindfulness practice, you can. If you just want to call that, I'm going to sit <laughs> and breathe, you can call it that, whatever resonates with you. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of that, and I will have an audio that guides you through a short sit so it's manageable in your day. And then I will also guide you in what I would like you to journal about to help you get into this a little bit deeper for yourself. So we're going to look at how you write your story right? And then we're also going to look at what you want your story to be like. And uh, this is a pretty cool exercise to, to get into. Um, so first week stuff also, now that we're through like this kind of heavy sort of juicy intro, you're worthy of wellness video. <laughs> um, if I haven't already reached out to you, you will be getting a food journal. We'll work on that in your individual call. And I will be sending you some information about your first sit down with me individual so we can work through some of your, your personal goals. Um, and everything should come to you via email. So if you're missing anything, just shoot me a message. And that's the other thing to you guys, you have access to me. So if you have questions, if something comes up and you need to just get it out, just shoot me a message, text or Facebook messenger or email, whatever works, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so I will, I will cut this video off here, uh, but I, I, uh, I look forward to chatting about you or <laughs> chatting with you about these activities and how they go through uh, when we get to our group call on Monday. So have an awesome day. <laughs>